Hauntingly Humdrum, a slice of life Halloween anthology. This episode, which says which. My grandmother used to tell me, there comes a time in every young witch's life when they have to make a choice, an unshakable choice, a choice that binds them forever. It is a choice that must be handled with a world's worth of gravity, a choice only the witch can make for themselves. But that was just grandma, and she was always kind of serious. I think I liked mom's version of it better. She just told me, make the choice that feels right. Honestly, that was a lot more helpful when it came time to pick out my familiar. Maybe I shouldn't have put that much stock in grandma's words in the first place. After all, in her days, they had to go out into the dark, scary, and probably annoyingly tick-filled woods to find a familiar. We have stores right in town for that kind of thing nowadays. There's a familiar mart in pretty much every major city now. But if there is something Grandma was right about, it's that I had to make the choice by myself. Mom and Mama could only walk me up to the looming automatic doors of Familiar Mart. From there, I had to face what lay inside on my own. I remember it was dark inside, unnaturally dark. You can call Familiar Mart a store, but really we witches all know it's just a considerably less tick infested doorway to the Feyland. That's where all familiars come from, which can be a problem because Fey spaces, for those who are unfamiliar with them, can make themselves darker than any moonless night. It's hard to say how far I was into the store, but at some point, I realized I was hearing the chattering of small creatures and the growls of some not so small. When I stopped to look for the sources of the sounds, I saw I was surrounded on all sides by glowing eyes. Hundreds, maybe thousands of them, watching, waiting for my move. My move, of course, was what came naturally to me as a witch. I sat down on the floor to put myself level with those eyes and waited for them to make their move when they felt comfortable to do so. The first one to approach me was a cat, a fey cat, of course, and as it came closer, I could begin to see why there seemed to be so many eyes watching me from the darkness. There were at least five on the face of this cat alone, blinking unevenly as it walked up and sniffed at my sneakers. The cat apparently decided on its own that we wouldn't be a good match, and it was quick to slink back into the shadows. I was approached afterwards by an owl with four wings that came to rest on my shoulder, but was too restless to stay. A rat, also with four wings, that apparently took offense to the cookie I offered it. A blue fox with two heads, one of which seemed to like me, but another which kept pulling away, and who was I to break up a happy family? I feel like I saw dozens of strange creatures that night in the vast, empty face door. After perhaps the fifth fey toad had hopped along, I really began to worry. Mama had told me I would know when the familiar felt right, but I was struck with the thought that perhaps I wouldn't even know what right felt like. What if I'd already missed them? What would I do? do if I didn't find them? Would I just be stuck in this store, interviewing potential familiars forever? But then, she showed up. A creature stepped out of the dark, lumbering toward me, the flowers and grasses growing amongst her fur rustling with her movement. And then she stopped. And there was just me and her, alone together, trying to decide if we were meant to have that unshakable bond forged between us as witch and familiar. 
I offered her a cookie. <laughs> she ignored it and lumbered closer, settling down beside me and placing her head in my lap. And we both realized it had already been decided. We were bonded forever. Ma'am, that's very nice and all, but familiar or not, you still cannot bring your grizzly bear familiar into the theater unless you buy him a ticket. Oh. So Esmeralda Hopkins can bring her toad familiar in her purse, but I have to pay extra for my lovely Ursula? And after she's waited so patiently to see Paddington 3? Well, I see how it is. Come on, Ursula, let's find a theater that will appreciate our business. Why don't any witches ever just read the familiar policy in advance? Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Hauntingly Humdrum. This episode was written by Claudia Elvidge. Ivy was performed by Leo Rivera. The Ticket Vendor was performed by Casey Kirby. Sound Design by Nico Goldstein. The music used for the intro and outro of the podcast is The Show Must Be Go by Kevin McLeod. Links for transcripts and casting crew information can be found in the show notes. Happy Halloween! <laughs> <laughs>